All right, Matt. So this is a different longevity this week. So this is more of the studies from 2005, but the topic I just hear all about now. So it's not quite this week, but in a way it is. So I'm sort of calling it don't drink caffeine first thing in the morning. So you hear 60 to 90 minutes. This is a screenshot from my YouTube. I believe I just typed in caffeine in the morning. I got these shorts from Huberman, from um, Kino Body, Gregor Galler, from our friend, Team Land. ASAP Science saying, are you consuming your coffee correctly? Just kind of <laughs> a lot of these high viewed videos. And is someone like maybe it's someone like me who I want to have a better protocol. It just makes it, it adds a lot of confusion. Yeah. And so I wanted to go to the original study, the only one I could find directly linked by people like Huberman and whatnot. That's talking about this and yeah. get your opinion on it. OK, well, I could tell you my opinion up front, which yeah. is that this is a bunch of, you know, people getting excited over nothing. Okay. Like, I don't think it matters. Spoiler? Yeah. Honestly, I don't I don't think it matters whether you wait 90 minutes or two hours after waking up to drink a cup of coffee. Um, I think there are people who are sensitive to caffeine. If you're sensitive to caffeine, you probably know that already. And you should not drink the coffee at any time of day that it is impairing your ability to function or sleep. Period. Full stop. Yeah, that's that's too short of a video. <laughs> I think it's pretty easy. You, you need a three hour long video. Reason. So we can talk about the study. But again, I, yeah. I my feeling is, look, there are things that matter. There are things that might matter a little bit. There are things that don't matter at all. This falls somewhere between might matter a little bit and don't matter at all, hmm. I believe. OK, I kind of wanted to start, too, with going over like our own caffeine protocols. OK, again, kind of kind of being teasing there. But um, so when you usually wake up each on average day, uh, probably 5 a.m. 5 a.m. OK. Yeah. And then what time do you have your first? Sip of coffee as soon as I possibly can. No, I yeah. mean, I usually get up and, you know, obviously there's like, you know, take the dog outside, do all that stuff and then make a pot of coffee and sit down and have a cup of coffee and go through emails. OK. And do you crash later in the day or, you know, subjectively? No, not really. Like, I, I mean, again, I think like everybody, depending on how you slept the night before, what else is going on, how busy you are. There may be periods where I get tired mm -hmm. uh, when the opportunity presents itself. Like if I'm I, I don't I don't take a nap in the office. Yeah. But, you know, if I'm at home, yeah. like for if, and, and the opportunity for a nap comes up and I'm tired, I'll take a nap. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, I don't think I I, re I don't routinely crash in the mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. And then do you keep track of like total milligrams of caffeine? Pay no day? attention. No attention. And you you talked you told me that you can do caffeine at like 6 p.m. And still yeah. Fall so I'm, I mean, I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, I don't recommend that. I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with it. The, the data on caffeine is interesting. And I think pretty clear that, you know, for many people at least up to a large amount of caffeine that probably very few people consume, there seems to be health benefits that, that are correlated with consumption of caffeine. I don't want to suggest it's the caffeine. Could be other things in the coffee, right? It's complicated. But I don't think there's any reason to be concerned about the amount of coffee you're drinking if it's not impacting you negatively in terms of sleep quality, jitteriness, right? Anxiety, whatever. Um, I, I don't think there's much data to suggest that you should limit your caffeine if it's not impacting you negatively. Yeah. I always think about the negative feedback loop, like being a construction worker, you're tired, you drink more caffeine, your sleep gets worse. The next day you have a second energy drink and that, that sort of negative feedback loop is what I would want to avoid with caffeine. Yeah, I, I can see that. Again, I think it's very individual. I think also, you know, I don't put anything in my coffee. Like in some ways I feel lucky. I sort of grew up on vending machine coffee when I was doing the morning shift at UPS, right? Yeah, yeah. Unloading trucks. So I, it was black. It was like, that is hardcore coffee. Um, I think if you put especially caloric sweeteners in your coffee, that's a whole different situation. And, you know, then then I think there's the the consequences to the calories and the sweetener itself that are different from mm -hmm. from the caffeine or the coffee itself that you need to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're drinking black coffee, again, my view is pay attention to how your body's feeling, how you respond to caffeine. But I, I think this, honestly, I think it's nonsense yeah. worrying about should you wait an hour or two hours after waking up to drink your first cup of coffee? I just don't think it's something we should be paying attention to. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's a distraction I, from what's important. <laughs> and there's important things to pay attention to. Yeah. Diet, exercise, sleep. Kind yeah. Of yeah, yeah. So I wake up at around four. And so Monday through Friday, I actually probably end up waiting 60, 90 minutes just because I drink caffeine before my workout. My workout's later in the day. Yeah. I never do caffeine past noon because I've noticed personally it'll affect my sleep. I think I'm more sensitive than you are. It could just be genetic. Mm -hmm. Um. And then on Saturday, Sunday, I pretty much drink it right when I wake up. So I'm kind of, I kind of do both. And do and you I, feel a difference in no, how the day not goes? Really, no. Yeah. So anyway, I thought that was relatively interesting, but. And I mean, look, there's all the habits around caffeine, the social 
aspects around, or not caffeine, but coffee yeah. or tea, right? Uh, it's very habitual. And like I said, there's a social component in many situations that that add to the complexity of really figuring out, um, you know, if you are feeling an impact, what is it actually due to, right? Yeah. But, but, but certainly caffeine itself, it is known there are people who are sensitive, there are people who are resistant, then there's the average. You could actually, I think 23andMe will give you some insight into that, at least mm -hmm. based on the, the low side that they know about. But I think also most people, if you're really sensitive to caffeine, you kind of already know it and you've learned not to drink coffee after lunch or with dinner or whatever. And if you haven't learned that, pay attention. If you drink coffee after lunch and you don't sleep as well, and you know there are tools to, to measure stuff like that, yeah. wearables, then maybe try not drinking coffee after lunch for a week and see how it goes. Well, I do want to add, actually, I broke my rule yesterday because me, you, and a friend had yeah, lunch. And right. You guys got coffee, and I was like, okay, when in Rome. So I got one, too. Is that like one thirty? Yeah. And I slept great. Yeah, yeah. 92 or a ring score, you know, just for reference. Right. But right. I, but still, one thirty versus 6 p.m. might be a very different yeah, situation. So. I'd be up for sure. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if we want to go into the study. I do kind of want to maybe highlight it here. So in 2005. Case. So here's my question. Like, if this is really the only study that addresses this, why are people talking about it now? I have no idea. Like this is, well, I mean, I have an idea. This is 20 years old almost. Yeah. Really? <laughs> this is the data that everybody's getting all worked up about? <laughs> yeah. Come on. And I, I'm really not seeing the conclusions they're coming to. I feel like someone made a conclusion based off this and everyone's running with that person. Yeah. And not actually going. This so that's why I wanted to. Internet influencer mentality here. So we could post it in our in our um, description just so people can go and read it for themselves, which again is something I'm trying to preach here, which is before OptiSpan, I just kind of trusted the middleman. Now I'm trying to yeah. read it for myself. Don't trust the middleman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's the theme of this longevity this, this yeah. week. So 2005 study funded by NIH uh, is called Caffeine Stimulation of Cortisol Secretion Across the Waking Hours in Relation to Caffeine Intake Levels. Okay, let me actually, this is, this is minor, but just it's worth people understanding. This is on the NIH database, mm. it doesn't necessarily mean it was funded by NIH. It probably was, but just because it's on PubMed Central, which is what PMC stands for, um, that's just a database that is mandated. If, you're, if your research is published by NIH, you are required to put it on PubMed Central. Many people put, it, put their data on PubMed Central regardless, but it doesn't necessarily mean it was funded by NIH. Oh, These authors are not from NIH. They're from University of, looks like Oklahoma, uh, Minnesota and I don't know, someplace in Buffalo. All right. So quick high level of the study. So it was randomized, placebo control, double blind, four week crossover trial. The, there was 98 healthy adults, so 48 men, 48 women, non-smokers, no medications, no obesity. So the caffeine dosing, so they had zero milligrams per day, 300 or 600 milligrams for five days. And they'd have a challenge day on the sixth day, which is 250 milligrams at 9 a.m., 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. on the test days, they call it the challenge days. And they would do uh, saliva cortisol samples eight times a day, but I believe 7.30 to, from 7.30 to 7 p.m. And cortisol, this is meant to assess stress, essentially. Exactly. All right. So what does this study actually show? <laughs> okay. So first of all, I have not read the study in depth, um, but basically what they are looking at is the impact of coffee consumption on cortisol levels. And cortisol is a stress hormone, and it's known that coffee consumption can raise cortisol levels, at least in some people. And so I think there's a couple things that they were interested in. They were interested in, with a dose response, so no caffeine, 300 mg, 600 mg, what does that look like in terms of the cortisol response? And then the bigger question I think they were interested in asking is, do people who drink coffee regularly, if you challenge them with more coffee, do they have a a sort of tolerance? Do they have a reduced cortisol response? Mm. As far as I can tell, there's nothing in this study that actually addresses the question of waiting an hour or two hours to drink coffee. Mm. So if this is the study that's based on, there is absolutely no data here to support that one way or the other. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Again, I don't think it's important. I think it's all nonsense, but there's absolutely nothing here to yeah. support, to address that. <laughs> so what they did was they uh, had people stop drinking coffee for, I think about a week. And then they had them tra drink, like I said, zero, 300, 600 megs for five days. And then they gave them a challenge with 250 megs of caffeine. Mm -hmm. And the take home is that if you drink, everybody shows a response to the challenge. If you drink coffee regularly, at least at these doses, the response is blunted. Mm -hmm. Not shocking, uh, but in, potentially interesting. Uh, um, having said that, again, nothing here related to waiting. I think, I guess... 
I guess the idea might be that if you wait to drink your first cup of coffee, the cortisol response will be delayed. Maybe that's the, that's plausible, yeah. mm -hmm. although not shown here. And I don't know why that would impact when you crash. It would just delay it by an hour and a half that, if you're going matter. to, but I don't think you're going to. So again, I think it's all sort of made up. Yeah. And the whole idea of cortisol competes with adenosine. Is that like, I don't know if that was a part of it too. Like in the morning, you have high, you have low adenosine, high cortisol. Right. So, I mean, the there day. is this, this idea, right. That, um, sleep is related to the accumulation of adenosine, right? So when you sleep, then you clear that out. And sure, if there's an interaction between, between cortisol and adenosine, that might impact sleep quality. I, again, this is not my area of expertise. To what extent is that, um, how, uh, coffee is impacting sleep quality and, and how solid is that adenosine model? Not my area of expertise. I can't, I don't really know. So, but again, I don't, if we're going back to the main point, I don't see how, um, delaying drinking your coffee is going to do anything than delay this hypothetical crash that I don't actually believe happens in the first yeah. place. And we watched a pretty fun video, which we'll link below, but James Hoffman is a coffee YouTuber and him and his team just sort of put together a little study challenging this <laughs> idea. Yeah. And so we'll link it below. I think people should go and watch that. Yeah. I mean, again, I think if, if, if the question is, does, um, does delaying drinking your coffee, so does drinking coffee first thing in the morning cause a crash and does delaying it prevent the crash? The way to, to tell that is to actually do the experiment, right? Hmm. Yeah. I forget the saying, but something like majoring in the minor. Like, why do you yeah, think again, we have this culture right now of getting obsessed with protocols in the minor? I think because these the people minor. don't have anything important to talk about, and so they have to generate stuff to get clicks. Hmm. I, I don't think it's any more complicated than that. Okay, yeah. That was actually genuinely helpful, because I was going a little bit crazy reading that study and trying to figure out, tracing back this whole idea and where it came from.